Now, in all of our previous videos, you can see that we are returning a string, which is fine, but most of the time you're not going to be returning a string because for the client it might be very hard to consume, if especially if it's organized nested data. And we also want to return more information, not just one single message. So JSON can be a great choice. But the question is, well, how do we return JSON from our actions? So let's go ahead and see. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and I will call it models. So all of the models that I want to return will be inside the models folder. I'll create a brand new model, a SIF file, and let's call this movie. The first thing I'm going to do is import vapor. And now I can go ahead and create a struct to represent a movie. I'm also going to make sure that this particular struct conforms to the protocol content. The content protocol is actually part of the vapor. And by conforming to the content protocol, the movie struct can be encoded and decoded. You can always click, uh, command click and jump to definition to see what exactly is the content protocol. You can see that it is conforming to codable, request decodable, request encodable, and so much more. What other properties do we want in our movie struct? Well, you can add any property you want. I'm just going to go ahead and add a property called title of the movie. Okay, so now we have a movie struct that is conforming to the content protocol. How can we create a movie and then return an array of movies? If I go to my routes file, I have these two different routes, movies for the genre and movies for the genre and the year. I want to return all the movies, meaning an array of the movies, and I want that route to be just movies. So I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new route, app.get, and this will be simply movies. We're going to go ahead and say request async and Maybe our route is going to be smart enough to understand that what we are returning using the type inference. If I want to return something over here, I can simply go ahead and say movie and create a movie using the title. Let's say Batman. So if I go to the movies route, it should return me an array of Batman and it was automatically going to convert it to JSON since the movie is conforming to content. Let's go back and try to run the application. We're going to run the server. Once the server is running, I'm going to go to a URL and go to the URL for the movies. So let's go ahead and simply say movies. And now you can see that we are getting an array of movies, and this movie contain only single movie with the title Batman. So this is great. I mean, it's pretty simple to return an array of movies. Obviously, it's an, if it's an array, then I can go ahead and put some more stuff in there, like different movies. So let's go ahead and add a couple of different movies. And again, I'm going to go ahead and start my server so that the new changes can take effect. And I'll simply refresh, and now I'm returning an array of movies. If the movies have some sort of a year associated with them, then obviously I need the year property. And I can add that year property. Now I need to make sure that when I'm creating or constructing a movie, I'm also providing the year. So let's go ahead and provide some of the years. So I'll say year 2022. And I'm just getting like some random year over here, which can be 2020. Let's go ahead and run the application again. And this time you will note that apart from the title of the movie, we're also returning the year of the movie, 2023, 2022, 2020, or whatever the year is. 
So this is how you can return a particular JSON to the user. Very, very important because when you are getting the data and when you are giving it to the client, whether that client is a web client or an Android application or iOS application, it's always a good idea to give them in a format that is easily consumable. And one of those formats is JSON. That's why we are using JSON. Okay. So this is great. The next thing that we want to look at is if we are getting the movies, what about posting? Maybe somebody is filling out a form on an iPhone application and that consists of the title of the movie and the year of the movie and they want to post it, meaning they want to probably create a new movie. So in the next lecture, we'll be looking at how can we post information to our Vapor server. This video is brought to you by my latest course, Mastering Full Stack iOS Development Using Sif UI and Vapor. This is a 12-hour course which takes you on a journey of creating a full stack application. This means that you are not only going to learn the Sif UI, which is the client side, but you're also going to be learning about the server side. You will create your own server using Vapor and you will integrate it with Postgres database. You will also learn about MongoDB protecting route authentication using JWT deployment middleware, so much more, so much more. This is a complete course. If you wanted to learn full stack development, then this is the only course you need. 12 hour course, already have 200 plus students registered. If you want to register for this course, then check out the YouTube description. There's a link and click on that link, use that link to register and enroll in this course. Thank you so much. Let's get back to the video. Now let's go ahead and see that how we can perform a post request and especially the post request, which is requesting or sending a request as JSON. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new route, app.post. And what are we trying to post? Well, let's say that we're trying to post a movie. So I'll just say movies. We will go ahead and say request async in. Okay. So for when you're creating a movie and we already have a movie model over here, this means that the person will be sending in the title and the year. These are the two things they will be sending. If we go back to our routes, this means that we can decode the information that the user is sending, the actual content, the body that they're sending into a movie. So we can use request.content.decode and we can provide that it will decode to which type. So I'm just gonna say movie type, so movie.self. And this is going to give us a particular movie. So whatever the movie that you're sending, and you're basically sending in a JSON format, so probably you'll be sending something like this. If I have to type it out in JSON, you will be sending like the title of the movie. This is a correct JSON format, and whatever the name of the movie is. And the other thing that you will be sending will be the year of the movie. Oops, not sure what happened over there, but year of the movie, which can be anything, so the 2023. And that's going to map to this particular movie because this movie struct does have a title and the year. So if I go back, this is kind of like the JSON that the user will be sending, the client will be sending. We're going to decode it to movie. Hopefully it will be successful because the movie struct does contain the title and the year. So that's why it should be successful. Once we got the movie, we still need to return something. So we're just gonna go ahead and return the same exact movie, all right? Now this might be kind of like, well, why are we returning the same movie again? I mean, why are we even doing this? Uh, we're just doing this just to show you that we are able to get the movie and then return the movie, basically encode it again into JSON format and return it. The request.content.decode can blow up, so we have to use Try cache over here. And there we go. We have created our post route in which you're going to send in the movie. We're going to decode the movie. 
And then we are just going to send the movie, the same exact movie, we're going to send it back as JSON. Let's go ahead and run our server and see that if we can invoke this particular route. So this route will be on our, you know, 127.0.0.1 slash movies, but it will be a post route. So that's the important part. So let's go copy this URL. The best way to invoke a post route is by using some sort of a networking tool. I'm using Postman, but you can use anything you want. I'm just going to go ahead and put the route over here. This will be our movies route. Make sure that you change the get to post. Headers, we're going to set the headers. We're going to tell the server that the content type that we are sending will be in application JSON. Application JSON and the body. I'm going to use raw, which means I'm going to actually type in raw JSON. The title, the movie title, let's call it Superman or something. And year. Great. I can go ahead and send it. And you can see that it gets me back the same exact thing. This means that we were successfully able to send the request and we were able to get the request. You can actually see over here that the post was actually successful. The post to movies was done. So the server is telling you something was going on. And we returned the same exact movie back. So this is definitely a great way to post. And using the power of Swift language, we are able to decode it strongly to a strongly typed movie. So we are able to do all of those different things. So this is how you will be posting JSON using Vapor.